what are the four stages of a trade that you absolutely cannot ignore so that you can make a trade profitably and properly we're going to talk about that today coming up Now a lot of people think that making a trade is just as simple as as simple as where is my mouse clicking buy and sell not sponsored by Logitech and a lot of people rush in a trade and then they get killed and then it'd be like oh forex trading is very risky stock trading is very risky you know before you open a trade before you click buy and sell you gotta learn how to find opportunities every single day when you wake up you are waking up to tons of opportunities so the first stage you gotta learn how to properly spot signals doesn't mean that if you see a trade then it is a trade that it is time to trade okay there are three main types of opportunities the first one is a bad lousy shitty opportunity then the next one is not too bad opportunity i would say mediocre trade a medium probability trade okay so a medium probability trade well just now the one was low probability okay and then of course you have your favorite, my favorite, a high probability trade, meaning a good trade. This is very important because you know why? A lot of people, they don't define what a bad trade is, what a mediocre trade is, and hence, they get into every single trade that they see. Yes, learning to find good opportunities is very important, but learning to spot the not so good opportunities is just as important. Just like, for example, if you like to trade breakouts not only do you need to learn how to trade breakouts properly but you also need to learn to spot what are the breakouts that are here to cheat you just like your ex and the thing is if you don't know what is a bad mediocre high probability trade you will see way too many opportunities and hence two things can happen first one you see so many opportunities you get paralyzed second thing you will see so many opportunities you over trade and you know what is gonna happen basically when you are trying to spot opportunities you gotta look at many different things not just is the crossover already completed is the stochastics over so over it's not as simple as that if it is as simple as that then our life will be a lot more simple so the first thing you need to look at is are there any developing price patterns or chart patterns and of course every single time when you trade you gotta look at if i'm to enter into a trade now which stage of the trend am i in what kind of market am i trading in am i trading in the middle of the trend end of the trend or at the early stage of the trend or am i trading a sideways ranging market unpredictable market then the next thing is you gotta check the volatility based on the volatility the trend stage and the patterns are there any opportunities to trade if yes then is it good or not like what i taught you in the previous video did i teach you that the key critical levels areas of confluence any areas of support resistance you need to take note of don't be don't be ignorant to it okay don't be ignorant to it the second stage before you click your buy and sell button very important set your tp target first set your stop loss target first calculate your position size first before you click buy and sell okay how you enter a trade is very important because you gotta enter a trade in such a way that it suits your trading personality are you an aggressive trader investor or are you a conservative trader and investor because these two things is gonna make a big 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 difference now if you're an aggressive trader you would enter right at the end of the trend why do you do that kind of thing because you want to trade reversals meaning you try to pick tops and bottoms but if you're a conservative trader you would trade along with the trend meaning you trade somewhere in between the trend and also if you're aggressive you would go into range trading meaning you trade the sideways markets but i would say this is more risky as compared to reversals because first thing first range trading number one there's a lot of false breakouts number two the risk to reward ratio is not that good when you trade the reversals, you can have a good risk to reward ratio. You can use a trailing stop. So I would say this is a lot better. I would prefer this over this. And then if you're an aggressive trader, you would enter a trade earlier. This means that you would require less confirmation indicators. Example, aggressive trader, they might only need like one confirmation or two confirmation. Then they'd be like, okay, let's get in. Then for conservative traders, because they need more confirmation, then they would have to enter the trade 
later maybe instead of using one momentum indicator they use three momentum indicators so they need to wait until i start to get sticks and make cd to give them the same signal which by the time hope is not too late then they enter after that so conservative trader you will need more confirmations okay now there's no right or wrong as to okay is it better to enter earlier or later because the problem with entering earlier with less confirmation is that you might get into a false signal a false breakout a false signal but if you do get into a trade that worked out you can get more profits but then if you a conservative trader you enter later of course you get more confirmation but there is a price to pay you would harvest less profits because by the time you enter probably it's a little bit too late but not too late you know what i'm saying so as a conservative trader they would try to trade during a low volatility market and then aggressive traders they love volatility and hence they're gonna trade the volatile markets okay and not only that they're gonna trade the less liquid markets conservative traders they would prefer trading in the more liquid markets the more liquid trading sessions for example the london trading session as compared to the asia trading sessions if you don't know what i'm talking about please go and watch the video trading session mastering trading session i don't remember the title go and find it but you know i feel that as an aggressive conservative trader in general it's very important for you to avoid trading during the sessions which are not so liquid so if people are not trading during those less liquid sessions then the indicators will also not work out as well okay once you enter the trade then the next stage is you gonna what is that eh? you gotta manage your trade it's actually not really managing your trade because what people cannot manage is themselves so it's not about trade management it's about you management it's about self-management because a lot of people when they have an open trade they cannot control themselves either they tp early either they cut loss late it's like a lot of weird things so once you have an open trade there are two choices that you can do if that make any sense once there's an open trade there are two choices you can have and that depends on whether you're an aggressive trader or conservative trader yet again so if you're an aggressive trader you would monitor the charts more you would have more screen time and if you're a conservative trader you would adopt a no monitoring approach which means that once you have an open trade you would set and forget you wouldn't monitor it now the thing is should you monitor your trade should you look at it all the time or should you completely not look at it or should you look at it once an hour there's no right or wrong because if you look at it too much you're gonna do stupid things if you don't look at it at all but if there's a sudden unexpected event that happened a price pattern that is formed then you cannot completely ignore that so i would say strike a balance maybe glance at it once every one hour and the thing is when you adopt a set and forget approach what do you do with yourself because you're a trader if i can't trade currencies then what do i trade well then look at the stock market then look at the commodities markets to find other opportunities are you open a trade in stock market are you open a trade in commodities market then what if you don't know what to do with yourself there are a lot of things that you can do when there's no trade watch video read books go out talk to traders or talk to random people whatever you want to do fourth stage a lot of people they plan for the entry but then once they open the trade then they'll be like okay now what you're gonna get messages from people now karen i have an open trade now what planning for entry is very important yes but when are you gonna get out in fact i think that sometimes exit is just as important as your entry but yet most people they just focus on entry most people they just focus on when can i jump off the plane that's the most important thing whether i have a parachute or not that is not my concern okay then make sure you don't go to skydiving so how do you exit it depends on whether you're aggressive trader or conservative trader if you're aggressive trader you will monitor a chart why do you monitor so much because instead of getting out entirely when the price hit your tp target you scale out let's say if you're trading one standard lot then the price hit the first resistance then you scale out maybe half of the position so now you're left with fifty thousand units to run the trade with then when the price hits the next resistance then you're gonna scale out maybe twenty thousand units and the thing is you can scale out based on many different factors okay like what i said just now you can scale out when the price hit 
the first resistance area you can scale up when there's a divergence forming or you can scale up when all of a sudden there's a reversal pattern for example when you're in the buy trade you see a double top for example you see a bash reversal candlestick pattern at a resistance area with divergence then you'll be like i better get out and if you're a conservative trader how do you exit you set your tp target stop loss target before you open the trade then because you adopt the set and forget mindset and hence when the price hit your tp target you're out simple as that you open 100,000 units you open one standard lot you're out 100,000 units out and also remember aside from these things if there's a developing supply and demand zone okay also take note okay also take note now if you don't know how to spot support resistance areas i've done a video in the past you can go and watch it go and check it out okay so with that i'll talk to you in the next video bye